Hello everybody and welcome to another pre-modern video. We're going to be playing uh, kind of a meta deck, I guess I can call it. But it's not a meta deck in the way that you expect a meta deck. This is a meta deck against the meta game, if that makes sense. Let's check it out, because it is a, kind of a revamp on an old classic. We're talking about none other than blue-white control, but we have seen a pretty interesting shift in the metagame where cards like Standstill, which has been the de facto best way to build blue-white control, it simply just don't cut it anymore. Cards like Standstill and, you know, just trying to play a slow, grindy game using Decree of Justice, which works obviously very well with, uh, with Standstill, it just doesn't work anymore because you end up too often blowing up your own standstill and like decks just don't play on that axis any longer. So we have accumulated knowledge instead as a way to accrue card advantage. And what's really hot right now, what's really popping is Parallax Tide. We saw it winning Lobster Con in the hands of Brian Selden with this uh, crazy new innovation. And um, this is, I think the way that blue-white control is going to be needed to be built from now on, you need blue-white control to have something of an axis to do something like this. We have seen the blue version of control doing better in the past couple of months, and I don't think that's a coincidence. That deck is able to do the parallax type thing a lot better, and uh, the standstill deck, on the other hand, has really nothing going for it, because it has worse mana, and yes, I mean, Source of Blush is a really big deal, but we're hoping to figure out a way to get the both of both, wor both worlds here, where we have access to Source of Plowshares, uh, Wrath of God, but we also have access to this big uh, late game Trump uh, in order to, to close things out. So you're going to notice that I'm, I did cut a Tide and I made room for a couple of Chain of Vapors and Stifle in order to combo with the Parallax Tide, of course. And then we have some Decrees of Justice. You're also going to see I always have been a fan of playing 27 lands in this style of deck. And usually I, I'm main decking the third Dust Bowl, but here instead I'm playing a Fairy Conclave. This is because obviously the, the blue pip requirements of this kind of deck are going to be a little bit, a little bit steep. And also, it's kind of nice to have, a, you know, it's not the best win condition of all time, but it is a win condition since we are cutting a decree of justice. So I was attempting to do like a little bit of two things. I don't think that cutting Coastal Tower is where it's at it, because the mana of the deck otherwise is pretty bad, if I'm being honest. So yeah, we're making room for Swords of Pleasure, Steel of Cleansing, Wrath of God. Obviously, these cards are fantastic, but the cost of doing so is, is pretty steep in messing with our mana. The mono blue versions of this deck have four copies of Fairy Conclave and they have, you know, just a bun bunch of basic islands, which is very, very nice. But uh, we'll see what, how this, uh, if this works out. So we're going to have some, uh, you know, counter spell man leaks, obviously, but then we're going to have Chain of Vapor, Stifle, and AK, and as I said, like all of these white cards. In the sideboard is where we get the big win. Like this is where we get the big difference between the uh, adding white, right? We get access to extra Wrath of God, Seal of Cleansing, and cards like Cop Red, and very notably uh, Melee Mage, which I think is going to be uh, kind of a fantastic card going forward. Like, it's pretty funny how we saw, like, the the downfall of Medley Mage with all of the Oath decks rising to prominence, and now all of a sudden we see Stifle Knot uh, going back on top, and especially with uh, some angles like Parallax Tide, and Medley Mage kind of covers it all. Like, if your opponent wants to play a Parallax Tide game, well, just Medley Mage it. If they want to play a Dreadnought deck, then, well, Medley Mage it. You have all of these cards that just get trumped. All of this new tech kind of gets trumped by Medley Mage. And being able to play Mage and then protect it with Counter Magic, or even more so, just be able to combo with Parallax Tide post Medley Mage, seems like a huge deal. I even thought about the concept but it seems like a little bit too bizarre of just like main decking melee mages but i feel like there's a lot of strength in being able to have access to wrath of god and source of plowshares uh, now onto the downsides of playing a deck like this is that we only have 15 cyber slots so you will see that all of the cards that i'm playing here are just you know very very strong overall cards and there were certain things that i wanted to have covered like i definitely wanted to have four medley mages i thought about doing three but i really want to have four anol is another card that uh, it's whose stock has risen because anol covers both parallax tide and phyrexian dreadnought and then of course you know your hydroblast and stuff third copy of parallax tide for the matchups where this is the a plan and uh, yeah, we, something is going to have to give. So you will notice that I have nothing against the deck like, for example, Elves. Like, 
this deck is going to be heinous against elves because I don't have any Curse Totem Humility style cards and I'm going to just get very easily grinded out by the elves deck because they don't care too much about the tight angle either. So this deck is not meant to beat elves. <laughs> I, I made that choice when building it and I feel like this is how you have to build a control deck like this. You have to choose what you want to beat and then just go with it. Like I could have chosen not to play any medley mages for example and play more hydroblasts and more annuls maybe if i wanted to to beat red instead if i wanted to beat uh, burn or goblins so it's one of those things where you have to choose what you want to beat and then you can just go with it and try to do your best in in doing so but i do think that the, the this this pieces of technology which is nothing new really like this is just something that had fallen out of favor that now i think is the time to come back to the forefront which is accumulated knowledge and parallax type so yeah we'll see how things go uh, we're kind of splitting the difference between being a very bad against creatures deck like the the mono blue version of this and we are being much better against creatures at the cost of being well a little bit worse at doing the parallax tied thing so we're gonna see whether this split the difference uh, approach works it's very very experimental but hopefully it's good <laughs> We'll, we'll figure it out together. If you enjoy my content, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. And if you would like to support my content, my content will always be free. But if you want to throw some bucks my way, you can always do so in my Patreon, which you can find in the description of the video down below. I'll see you for round number one. Game number one of this first round. This hand looks okay. We have some pretty decent mana. We have, I guess, some cards that do stuff. I do like in particular the Chain of Vapor because it's pretty flexible. I think I'm gonna lead on Flooded Strand, and then we see what we do. We can, if we really need to, we can fetch, but I would like not to fetch here. Going in with Wooded Foothills to begin. Let's see what we're looking at. Grim Levamancer. So we're playing against Burn most likely, and this is why I was thinking of this. I'm trying to think whether it's better to plow the Grim now or hold up Counter Spell. I think I'm going to plow the Grim Levamancer now. Maybe you should have actually played the. The basic planes instead of playing the fetch land there. Instead of the of the island, sorry. Another Lama Mancer. Uh, do I chain of vapor here? Nah. I think we just hang out. Bold face. Acceptable. Land. Curse scroll. I think that's fine. I imagine we'll see no attack. Oh, they do attack. Okay. So I guess that means that they have incinerate in hand. And I think I'm going to bounce the Lava Mancer here. We already have the stifle, so if I draw a tithe, I don't really need the the thing so i feel like it's much better to do this it also makes my opponent's mana worse not mana were mana worse uh huh yeah i'll stifle that obviously if i had a tithe i wouldn't but because i don't and i want to make my so what this means is that if they do this like if they um now they can't scroll right like that's the big thing that i'm i'm trying to leverage here but obviously I got super punished by the Vortex. That's an impulse. So I think I'm going to be cycling Decree here. Interesting. He's choosing to spend the entire turn to do that instead of... Because now we cycle Decree and then we're swinging for four next turn. So we may actually just be able to race this. Oh, he just has the Fire Blast. Oh, I'm dead then. <laughs> I guess that's how that goes. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> So we have all of these cards. Uh, I don't think I want Wrath, but I definitely want Tide. And I guess I want Seal of Cleansing. Not gonna go for Decrease. Oh, Cop Red, of course. Furnace is an interesting one. Furnace is the kind of card that could be great or could be terrible. I think I'm gonna actually go down on Annals because I already have four Seals and Seal actually combos with Tide as well, which is very nice. We have the Cop. I think I'm just gonna cut a couple of counter spells and just go with this instead. And the plan is gonna go is gonna be to just win with factories. The cure of justice is not even that good anyway. But yeah, the very matchup seems a little bit sketchy. Not gonna lie. Get to be on the play. Okay, I'll keep this hand. I like that we have some painless mana. And I think I'm gonna impulse on turn two. One and most to six. Mog fanatic. Play the factory and say go. I'm doing this because I get to impulse this turn. Like, I'm obviously not going to use Factory, but next turn I get to use Fairy Conclave. I get to play out the Fairy Conclave, I mean. So this means I can't block, which is fine, because I was thinking of impulsing anyway. Opponent fetches and pop. Let's see what we can impulse into. Yikes, that's a lot of lands. I'm going to get a Painless, just a basic. And that's a lot of damage, so we're hoping... That's a nice draw. 
Okay, perfect. So now we pass the turn and we can now use the factory to threaten to block. My opponent can trade two for one, but so they would be two for one in themselves, not me. So now I just pump itself. Opponent sacks in response and I blue elemental blast the pup. And now I have traded two for my land and I have destroyed my opponent's pup. This is, in my opinion, a pretty good exchange. Turns out my opponent has a bunch of more dudes, so not as good, but still pretty fine. So this doesn't do anything at all. So I'm just going to just do this main phase and I guess I'll play a darker way so I can impulse. It's just a one mana one one. I'm very surprised my opponent has it in. Maybe they just took out like lava darts or something like that and they just wanted literally anything, which could be. Okay, impulse, because we have the time. We find cop red. Nice. <laughs> Didn't even look at the other cards. Don't need to look at the other cards. Let's put it like that. Play this one. Here go. And here I'm definitely going to be using my mana. So I'm only preventing a single damage, but I'm forcing my opponent to attempt to do everything here, which is exactly what I want. Also, the fact that they only played a single Lightning Bolt in that is a great deal for me. Thinking whether I want to fall the main phase here just to find lands, but I don't. I really don't want to run. I think I'm just going to play out the Seal of Cleansing, and I really don't want to run into a Red Elemental Blast. That's the thing. So that's why I'm not just casting Factor Fiction there. I'm definitely going to use this because I don't think I'm really mana leaking anything here. Pretty funny that I could Seal of Cleansing just to force the pop and use my mana to... Per to protect uh, we're just gonna chill here sucks that we're missing land drops but so is my opponent so this is kind of fine and again i'm not using fof here because i i'm using my mana anyway and my opponent is the one that needs to kill me like the longer that the game goes the better that it gets for me especially considering what my hand looks like i think i may even source to plowshares this goblin vandal just so my opponent doesn't get to effectively port me every turn just because i have too many cards yeah so that's fine the source of pleasure is the Vandal. We already have another source. Like we're we're just in pretty good shape here, I think. Pass the turn. Don't think we need to seal. We're gonna wait until end step. They drew Barbarian Ring. Uh with only four cards in hand. Let's assume that I'm taking two from this. No, I think I would like some amount. I, I just, just need to hit land drops, right? Like I'm, I'm there we go. I'm due. <laughs> I'm due for some land drops. Like if my opponent just actually gets to resolve like a price of progress, it's such a disaster for me that I think this is fine. So my opponent has four lands, four cards in hand, I mean. Yeah, we'll see what they do here. They're fetching. We now have to be mindful of this Barbarian Ring because that means that uh, this is a call a source, which is kind of a big deal. But I think here I am going to Foth. Nice, good stuff here. I'm probably taking lands over anything else. The only thing I care about here are the lands. Like these are just like a, a redraw, which is fine. And then a Hydroblast, which is fantastic. But um, we'd rather have more lands or a factory. I guess I'd rather choose this pile. That's two wing cons though, so that, that is something to be aware of. Play land, say go. So now we get to play land, go for a bit. Eventually we'll find a parallax tide, hopefully. And once we do, things are going to begin to look up. Will I take a factory or an AK here? I guess I'll actually take a fa if an AK. So cast it here. Obviously we're not going to cast that one. Because <laughs> that would tap us out. But I might as well play Seal of Cleansing out. Pass the turn. Still flip. Feeling pretty confident about my situation. Second Barbering. So now that's a little bit more threatening here. Um, yeah, let's draw two. That's cool. More blue sources are good. More seals. I am playing it out because I'm just drawing them really, but I don't necessarily have a plan for them quite yet. As I said, I could pop one of them just to effectively trade with a seal of fire, which I think it's probably worth doing because my opponent's trying to get me to a spot where they are attempting to overwhelm my mana. I can hopefully prevent that from happening. Pop is actually nice for me because it gives me something to use my mana on and to get cards out of my hand. So I'm going to have four spells that I can stop. That seems fine. So I'm just going to use Foth because it's the more the more mana efficient play here. Maybe I should have done the thing last turn, honestly. Oh, there are the tights. <laughs> we were wondering whether these were. Now we know. Yes, I'm going to choose the pile with the tights. Uh, notably, that's another factory there. Which is kind of a big deal, but we are going to tithe. Yeah, my opponent has the reb. Do we fight back? I think we don't. We just pass the turn, and then we do it again next turn. Incinerate. We're gonna pay for that one. Uh, we're also gonna pay for that one. Oh, I misclicked. Uh, all right, I'm gonna. I guess I'm gonna take two for no reason. That sucks. That's a huge deal. That 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 that's a massive misclick. That's a huge huge problem. Anarchy? Yeah, I'm just gonna mana leak that. 
<laughs> yeah, this card sounds bad. Like, this is... I don't think this is it. Yeah, it's just... I, a four mana is just so much, man. <laughs> it's just so much mana. Yeah, this... I, I don't... This card looks so bad. I guess you have to do what you gotta do. Uh, yeah, okay, that worked out, though. Uh, so that misclick didn't end up costing. So, because of barbering, do I want Furnace? And actually, the fact that my opponent's playing Seals, it kind of makes me a little bit more excited about Annulls. Because now we'd be we'd be we would be countering Vortex, Curse Totem, uh, Curse uh, Scroll, and also Seal of Fire. Yeah, I think, especially on the draw, I kind of like Annull, I guess, better than Chain of Vapor. Tithe is a big part of my game plan, though. That's fine, though. We obviously saw the... Very nice combo of Circle Protection Red plus hitting your land drops. Uh, this hand seems okay. Obviously, like, double Hydroblast is the is the big one here, right? I do like the fact that we also have a factory. Make that too. But yeah, drawing the Conclave. Like, I really wish I had access to an, an ETV untapped land there. And it goes with the Mog attack. And missed land drop. That's a huge deal. I'm going to do this now because I really want to kill this Jackal Pup. So I think I want to do that through... My opponent having power blast. If they miss a land drop, I'm gonna feel very confident about my spot. Yeah, it looks like they do. I guess the answer is a little bit annoying, not gonna lie, but now this double factory means my opponent can't really attack. Now they have another land. Interesting, they do attack. So see, this is the newly controlled one. So I want to tap this one to activate my assembly worker. They bolt, I'll hide blast. Okay, so we trade the bolt for the factory which seems fine, and we trade Rev for Beb. Now we have another factory, and now we pass the turn. Problem now is the Grim Blood Lancer is pretty nice. So now we are going to activate factory with the island. So now I can double pump. Okay, pump there, and pump there. I really need some white sources and stuff, but we're not hitting land drops here, which is kind of the story of this, this game. I mean, we, as I said earlier, you know, like just having access to this kind of stuff is big, but at the same time, it's a problem. So what do I want to do here? I have to kill this. So I guess I do that now. And now we pass the turn. The other alternative was to main phase Chain of Vapor the Curse, the uh, little guy. But now, I mean, this means they can activate Curse Scroll. So activate Factory. So my opponent's really trying to bottleneck me on mana while I'm trying to bottleneck them on resources. And now we're just gonna pump itself. And my opponent can use Mog Fanatic now. To finish it off after dealing the one point of course island is a fine pickup uh, i think i'm going to spend this turn to seal of cleansing because this is a repeatable source of damage that i want to get rid of if they are ball lining i can chain it okay they have barbarian ring and they just pass the turn okay now we get a little bit of breath i guess i might as well play the seal of cleansing in case i draw the tithe notably barbarian ring does not have threshold it's a close game Okay, my opponent's hitting some land drops. We're definitely gonna need some more land, so I'm just gonna fetch there. Okay, so now we have our land drops covered. Now it's a matter of figuring out, can I draw one of my game enders before I die? That's a good one to have access to. Don't think I can really afford to start activating Conclave just yet, especially when this Barbarian Ring I cannot do anything about. Dust Bowl is nice, because that allows me to actually do something about the Barbarian Ring. It also forces my opponent to fetch, so I think I want to do this now. And I think I'm gonna sack the Dust Bowl itself. And, uh, I'm actually gonna sack the other Waste. Dust Bowl actually allows me to play around Price of Progress very nicely. So here we're trading a land for having my opponent to lure, be able to lure my opponent into my trap, basically. Just allow me to have a game plan. So now we go down to eight, uh, but now if we draw a Tide, we're gonna be in business we don't but if we do though because <laughs> my opponent was playing around the tide by holding on to the fetch lands now if we draw a tide it's gonna be game hey look at that two three four okay so this is actually a very interesting spot super super interesting spot because my opponent has three cards left in hand and if i tap out for this i get to get rid of my opponent because i can i can just uh, counter spell going down to seven or i guess blue elemental blast to not take any damage this also means i'm not going to be able to chain a vapor so do i fight over this i think i do this also allows me to start attacking with the conclave so yeah i'm going to do this just so i don't take one extra point of damage and i guess i do this on my opponent's upkeep yeah so one two three four five and now do i seal or do i chain i think i'm gonna seal and just like that, the lands are gone. Okay, so now we are in a decent spot. 
Okay, my opponent immediately, immediately hits the land drop, which is bad for me, but now we're... Okay, that's a good one. So, one, two, three, four. Main phase off, so we can hit land drops and stuff. My opponent did not have the Fire Blast, which is obviously a huge deal. And I'm going to choose this pile. This means the next turn we're probably going to do the exact same thing. Super regretting <laughs> not using the Chain of Vapor to save the point of life. But it is what it is. One, two, three, four... Off. There's another tithe though. Yeah, I'm probably still taking the tithe here. It's kind of rough to let go of all this stuff, but it's really the coastal tower here. Yeah, I think I'm just taking the just taking the tithe. I just want to close this game out. So now play a land, play a tithe. And I think I do this later. I guess on their upkeep. So one, three, chain of vapor. And I think I'm only really doing this because I have chain of vapor in hand, which means that I get another activation. I get another tithe. Otherwise, I would have gotten the other pile with the three lands and the AK. Bolt, I'm going to let resolve. This I uh, will mana leak. And now, no more lands. And I guess we get to start attacking now. I'm honestly considering just playing out the Tithe and dealing with this land. Uh, this I actually have to counter, unfortunately. Okay, cool. So now I'm, I'm doing that. So play Tithe, exile that. Swing with Conclave. Fading... Play a land. Now is when I would like to draw some more factor fictions. Or even another factory. Though we have just the one factory left. Six turn clock, baby. <laughs> That's big deal, actually. That allows me to, in a pinch, gain life. Play a land and scroll. Interesting. Definitely taking that land for sure. Impulse is a nice one. <sighs> this is an interesting one. <laughs> this is a super interesting one. I think I actually want the accumulated knowledge here over the circular protection red. And I guess I cast it right now to draw three. Okay, so one and this. Swing for two and pass. It's kind of a big deal. They found another land drop. So now upkeep, fading, and we stifle this trigger. Lands don't come back. This is kind of rough. If my opponent kills this fairy conclave, I'm low-key in quite a bit of trouble. I think I play out the tithe? I think so. Because I can, if my opponent plays another mountain, then in response to this fetch, I get to exile it and prevent Fire Blast from happening. Okay, one and fetches. Here we go. They fail to find? They're out of lands. Wow. I, I literally exiled all nine <laughs> of their lands. That's hilarious. Well, fading one. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm silly. I should have just activated Dust Bowl, sacrificing the Flood Stram. That is so funny. They're literally just out of mountains. So yeah, I guess maybe we get there? Question mark? Oh no, what, what happened? Were they just sandbagging? That's very surprising to me. This is all looking pretty silly right now. Relevantal Blast my Tithe. What does this mean? Okay, I guess I might as well make some free mana. Still gonna activate Fairy Conclave and attempt to get in there. It hits. Okay. Does my opponent have Double Bolt or something? No. We get to untap. Oh man, this is a Nail Biter. I don't think I can just wait to hope that I find a counter spell. Wow, we got there. We're going to find Impulse, and then Impulse into Factor Fiction, and then Factor Fiction into Counterspell. Okay, so we were going to get there. <laughs> wow, what a match. We got there. Parallax Tide, man. <laughs> this card's legit. Round number two. Here we have a perfect example of the cost of, <laughs> of Splash in White, right? Do I still keep this hand? If I find a blue source, this hand is kind of fine. I'm going to risk it. I'm going to keep this hand. Like I, I kind of like the fact that I have access to a Wrath and a Decree of Justice. I also have a Factory, which is nice. Basic Island. I'm going to play a Basic Plane, so if we're playing against Dreadnought, we disincentivize my opponent for going for it in turn one by representing Swords to Plowshares. Blue, white. Okay, so we'll play the Factory here. Potentially threaten to attack or... I'm, I'm not going to attack into Swords to Plowshares mana, but... As is, we could be just green-white Terrells with a pretty bad hand. Blue-white, opponent casts Meddling Mage. So this could be a very weird Gat hand. This could also be blue-white Flippy, opponent name Source to Plowshares. Would really love to find a blue source. If we manage to find a blue source, I think that we're going to be in really good shape. I guess even finding a second white source would be good. Oh, green. Green is an interesting thing. So this could, I guess, be... The Terragaton deck? Mox Diamond. Yeah, okay, so it is the Terragaton deck. My opponent threatens to attack. I think I just throw a factory in there, but... Blue Source, one time. They ice my factory. Kind of annoying, but another white source. I'm really surprised now, so... Fire Ice is quite a strange thing there. 
I do wonder if we're playing simply against like a non-meta deck. I think I want to try to attempt to find a land. So we're gonna cycle for one, which is pretty sad, but yeah. So this is not looking good. I'm gonna discard one of these counter spells and I'm not gonna block there. Okay, cool. Okay, now we're cooking. Now I like my spot. Most importantly, because we can mana leak in Armageddon, which is which would be kind of terrifying here. So now my opponent has no attacks. And we can AK, start to dig a little bit deeper, looking for more lands. So yeah, now I'm feeling pretty comfortable out of my spot. I could chain a vapor this Mox Diamond too. I have to imagine this means naturalize. Yeah, I think I just threatened to block. So we're gonna block and pump. And if my opponent wants to source to plowshares my factory, then I'm totally okay with that. Yeah, so they just threw away a mage. Yeah, plow source to plowshares my thing. Totally fine. So let's impulse now for another island, I guess. Untap. Play a land, swing for one. And if my opponent doesn't do anything ne next turn as well, I'm just going to chain a vapor the mox diamond. Uh, they hit the land drop, so I'm not going to. So my goal here is to have my opponent discard, right? So if they pass and they go to discard, then I can bounce the mox diamond. But they're, they seem to be hitting land drops, which is actually a little bit of annoying. Yeah, let's do this now, because my opponent's going to have to discard anyway. And this makes it so... Oh, really? They suck a land to bounce my token. I'm totally on board with this. Yeah, that seems like a really good exchange. So the idea is that now my opponent had to discard and I didn't have to discard myself, right? Because the problem is if I don't do anything there, I am going to have eight cards in hand and I'm going to be the one discarding. And I would really want for that to not happen. Opponent fetches with Flooded Strand. And they're playing some sort of dazed deck. I honestly don't know what they're up to. Yeah, Opt is going to resolve. I honestly have no idea what my opponent's playing. That's a card. So that's a little bit annoying, but it's fine. I guess I'm going to discard this Wrath of God. Opponent gushes. Okay, super interesting deck. Mox is fine. Imagine here comes the Armageddon. Winter Orb. Yeah, I'll counter that. This this looks like bait. Counter spell. Okay, so now they don't have Geddon mana, so I'm just going to counter. They could have another counter spell, which would be kind of annoying. We do get to on top of land. Impulse. Now we have to find an answer to this Winter Orb. The good thing is that we have a lot of time. Wear bear is quite irrelevant here. I'm gonna plow now. If my opponent wants to counterspell this, that's gonna use up their mana. So on top another blue source, play a land, pass the turn. So this is just banned to threshold, I guess. Medley mage. We'll just mana leak. Pass the turn. We on top our island. Yeah, I'm just gonna pass the turn here. The only once again, the only card I'm really scared of is Armageddon. And if I cast Accumulated Knowledge or Impulse here and I don't find an untap blue source, then my opponent's gonna have Armageddon mana, which is going to be pretty disastrous for me. City of Brass. So AK on end step, found a land, that's great. Untap, play a land, say go. We're just hanging out here. Four mana, Mystic Enforcer. I guess that's a card. Wow, opponent gushes. Okay, so they counter spell. Now, if we find an answer to this winter orb, we may be in really good shape. Finding a seal of cleansing of the top would be ideal. Because we can take a couple of hits from this Mystic Enforcer, no problem. <laughs> kind of brutal. I'm not gonna play that out, I don't think. I'm just gonna pass the turn. This winter orb is really doing a lot of work. There's the island. Tap another island. On tap lands, I will play out. I guess this will be the last turn that we get to hang out here. So we take six. Kind of have to find a source to plowshares for this. Untap. Let's see what we find. Opponent goes for the fire eyes. Okay, so I'll impulse then. None of these cards really do anything, unfortunately. I'll take the white source so I can go for the last resource. Wrath of God. No, oh, cool. Perfect. Play a land. And I think we plow now. So I force my opponent to use up their last two lands to counterspell. And then we can counter back. I did see days, and I would preferably try to not play into it. Counterspell the foil. It's guarding two islands, notably. Okay, so now we're not dead to the Enforcer anymore. And we know my opponent does not have Counterspell. They could have Armageddon, though. Opponent opts and play out Medley Mage. But this is nice because we just get to block with the factory. Naming Source to Plushers. Tap land is also acceptable. Haven't seen a seal. Another Winter Orb. It's pretty good for them. On the plus side, they're not really doing anything. Untap the coastal tower, kind of awkward, but I could use Parallax Tithe to untap my lands, which is kind of a weird thing, but it doesn't seem like it would be worth it. Not having counter magic here is kind of a big problem. Keep untapping some lands here. Stifle is, can allow me to do some stuff. 
for them to themselves. Pawn doesn't shuffle, which is a little bit scary. We'll see what they find. Okay, so we have exactly one last fetchable land. We're super dead to get on though. There's Were Bear, and I guess I'm gonna fetch, and I'm going to... Do I have enough to Foff? I have eight mana. Yeah, I don't think I can actually Factor Fiction here. My opponent's holding up Hardcast Foil, but if I Factor Fiction, then I'm not gonna have enough mana to Wrath plus Counter Magic, so I guess I have to just naturally draw it, which is a little bit awkward. Seal of Cleansing. That's an interesting one. Well, I guess all I can do is I can use Parallax Tide as a bait. Because I can just exile all five of my opponent's untapped lands. Another untapped land. Another untapped land. Gonna pass priority so my opponent has to use their mana now. Because this time they actually floated mana. Gonna take another island. Now going into combat. And now we'll see if they use the mana. They don't. So we're gonna take another island. This is to prevent days. And now we cast Wrath of God. If they have foil plus island then we're in trouble but... That seems fine to me. So now they don't have any more islands, and I get to stifle the tithe on my upkeep. Ah, uh, they have another enforcer. Yeah, that sucks. So yes, I have to top dig exactly source to plowshares, or I'm dead. We definitely have to stifle here the tithe. Uh, no source to plowshares, so I just died to the mystic enforcer. On to game two. Drake's Inferno seems fine. <laughs> Man, we're playing against kind of a weird deck. We probably need the extra Wrath of God. And I do like the Furnaces. I do have to respect Armageddon. And we obviously have to respect the Winter Orb. I think I'd rather have Seal of Cleansing than Anols. And the Chain of... The Parallax Tide Angle, I don't think it really does anything. My opponent can work so much better because of the Gushes and the Daces. So I think I'm just going to cut the Tides all together. Which makes me want to cut the Stifle and a Chain of Vapor. And now the question is to ch keep in an extra Chain of Vapor or to keep in Anol. I think I'd rather keep in the Chain of Vapor. And all seems a little bit too situational. Uh, yeah, this hand looks fine. So play a land, say go, floated strand, fetch, and upon important. I think I'm just playing out Seal of Cleansing on turn two. They draw from portent. Yeah, well, we're definitely playing Seal of Cleansing now. City of Brass. And then place Medley Mage. I imagine the name's words. Slightly annoying, but not the end of the world. Okay, so they have this enchant. So I'll, I'll just take this hit and use my mana to impulse and then step instead. Uh, ha. I guess I want a factor fiction. Untap. Play a land. Manalix is a nice pickup. Windswept Heath. And then cast another Medley Mage. I don't think I care about countering that one again. I have double factory in hand, so in play. So name's Wrath of God. Makes sense. Eventually I'm gonna be able to cycle a decree. Now my opponent's gonna have to figure out the split here. It's kind of a pretty medium, <laughs> actually. Pretty medium factor fiction. I think I'm taking the lands, especially because one of them is a factory, which I'm very much in the market for right now. Play a land and say go. Once again, the only goal here is to not get Armageddon. Really? Okay, going to fetch. And I think here I'm just going to go to blocks and just block the one on source to plowshares. I can just take the two damage. Put him fetches. If they disenchant, I just activate the second factory. Fire eyes. Yep, totally fine. So we float a mana to get our island. And now we use that mana to activate factory. And we go to block. The one name is source to plowshares. Pump. There's actually an argument here for just taking the trade instead of pumping. The reason for doing that is to actually play around days here. So we're just going to attempt to mana leak. We'll see if it works. Looks like it does. Which means that now our mana is unlocked. AK is nice. Do we start attacking? Kind of want to start attacking. We can use one factory to attack and another one to block. Werebear doesn't do anything. On end step. Now we get to AK. If we find a counter spell, I'm going to start attacking with both factories and play the third one. I think I'm going to plow the Werebear. I don't want to give my opponent mana. So my opponent, yeah, this is perfect. My opponent wasting a counter spell there is a huge deal. <laughs> I guess this can attack us at 4 4. I'm going to plow now. We're going to continue the onslaught. I guess I can. I, I want to get aggressive. Doesn't change the clock to use this factory to pump. So I will just let my opponent tap here. There's the Geddon, I imagine. Yeah. So there's the Armageddon, which sucks, but it is what it is. We still have enough lands to recover, and my opponent doesn't look to have that much business. So we're gonna play Factory so that we can pump. We can take a couple of hits from the Medley Mage, and it looks like my opponent did hinder their own development in the process. I don't think we can race, unfortunately. So we'll have to play it slow. That get on taking three Factories is a big deal. That's a very nice draw. Hey, I'll just pass. Another Mage. I think we just let this one go. I think they probably named Source to Plowshares. So now we get to Impulse on end step. <laughs> This is an interesting impulse. This may be one of the, probably the single most important play of this game. 
What do we do here? Do we take the Darker Wastes? Do I take the Decree of Justice? I think I take the Fairy Conclave. This allows me to Wrath after bouncing the Mage. Yeah, I think it's Fairy Conclave. It's it's very close though. Super, super close. Let's untap. One and finds the green source. No attack. Play Dust Bowl. Pass the turn. We can throw a Dust Bowl at the City of Brass. I think I want to do that. And I'm going to pitch the uh, Darker Waste, I think. Maybe I should have pitched the Dust Bowl instead. So let's pass the turn. Fof is not a bad draw there. One and plays the mock. Pitch in City of Brass. And step. Crack the seal. They don't float mana. And now I get to Fof. Okay. We're in this. My opponent should split spells versus lands. Like, it's pretty obvious that I'm missing land drops here. Yeah, I'm gonna take the Wrath, I think, because it comes with two lands. Play my land and pass the turn. This Chain of Vapor gives me a lot of security here. Sure. Doesn't really matter, I already have another seal. So, play my Seal of Cleansing, play my land, pass the turn. Opponent knows that I have a Wrath in hand. And step, blow out the orb, cast AK, I think this is for two. Yes, yes. This is looking pretty good. So, let's play Fetch Land. And I'm just going to preemptively... I, I just kind of want to use my mana here. So I'm going to play out the Seal of Cleansing, opponent and Annals. Interesting. Okay. Pass the turn. And I want to start attacking next turn. I'm going to AK for 3 here on end step. Quirion Dryad. Okay, so this is like a, just a weird version of Gat, I guess. Go to end step, fetch, get a land. AK, and now we're going to get to bounce the Meddling Mage on Wrath of God. Then we Wrath, and then we lock the game up. Opponent uses Misdirection. I'll mana leak. Pitching a null. I was not expecting Misdirection, honestly. Was most definitely not expecting Misdirection. So now we Wrath, and we pass the turn. We're gonna get to draw four on end step with Counterspell back up. Oh, they don't have a planes to go fetch. I guess they get on it away. That's funny. Just casually draw four. And now we have double Counterspell. Now we get to start to get aggressive. There's no need for me to attack with the other one. Doesn't speed up the clock, and I I want to make sure that I have double counter spell up. You may opt, opponent. I don't think there's anything they can draw from here that can actually save them. So if I were my opponent, I'll just concede and make sure that I can finish game number three. Where bear? I think I just wrath that. I save my counter spells and I just wrath that. Untap. Another counter spell is nice. Fetch for planes. Wrath and swing with factory with double counter spell backup. Untap. Play tower. Swing with factory. Once again, I want to have all my counter magic up, and then next turn, we're going to lock the game up. Okay, we got there. So, game number three. Do I want to change anything? This sound of least seems fine. And Chain of Vapor really, <laughs> really did work there. So, definitely having Chain over Anul was the right call. The question is whether I want to... Whether I want Chain over another Seal. I don't think I do. My opponent seems to be still pretty heavy on the on the plan of trying to winter over me out of the game. So I think I submit the same thing. This hand looks very good. Let's keep this. Opponent on a Moltus, play a land and say go. Second Wrath is kind of nice. They play Quirion Dryad. Okay, so I'm not gonna mess around here. I'm just going to untap, fetch for basic planes and just source to plowshares this now. Because I feel like the way that I, w I lose this game is if this, like if my opponent daces and this Quirion Riot just gets out of hand really quickly. So I don't think there's any need for me to play into a potential counter spell or a daze there. I think that we're just supposed to just chill out and hang out. This is a lot more manageable. I have a lot of turns before this becomes way too much of a problem. And I already have a counter spell, so I'm not super afraid of an Armageddon. Although knowing that they have access to Misdirection is a little bit scary. Opponent swings, fetch. They just YOLO Geddon. I guess they just think that they don't have a better spot and they want to end this game right now. Or maybe their last card is Misdirection. If their last card is Misdirection, that's a disaster, but... Okay, so... I think I attempt to Wrath. Okay, that resolved. Now if they get in, at least they don't have anything to kill me with. So that's obviously good for me. And I think this one we just Wrath again. We're just trading Wrath of God one for one, but I just don't think that my opponent can have that many threats. Quirion Riot. Okay, and now we can actually use this Decree of Justice very, very effectively. Honestly, it's kind of low-key a little bit sad because <laughs> my opponent, this factory means that my opponent is not going to want to attack. <laughs> it's a little bit weird. Uh, so let's fall Yeah, because maybe we can flip with an Accumulated Knowledge and now we can use this AK to draw two. Yeah, so now we choose this pile and now we AK to draw two, which works out really well for me. Past the turn, we're gonna cycle Decree this time around. Opponent plays a mock. 
We made four dudes, and I think we are in pretty good shape here. Play a darker waste, play this, pop the Mox Diamond. I don't want my opponent to have any mana to do their nonsense. Could have attacked there, but I think I'm much more comfortable just hanging out and just casting Factor Fiction and not worrying too much about it. Gonna choose the pile with the mana leak and the impulse now. If my opponent has a daze, I don't care. That's a Wrath of God. So that should close the game out. So now I have the insurance that I'm not going to randomly lose. And I guess I'm just going to swing with three of these dudes. Opponent has no cantrips or anything, which is obviously pretty good for me. We're flooding a little bit. It's a little bit awkward, but I think it may be just fine. Soldier is coming in. Still have the factory to hang back. AK is very nice. So I'm not gonna cast it right now because we would be effectively going to discard. So finally found some sort of cantrip. We are covered from what really matters though. And now my opponent is in a spot where they can't actually attack because they're at four. End step AK. This one's for three. Make that four, I guess. I uh, don't need to go to this card though. I'm feeling pretty comfortable here. Let's just swing plus wrath. Okay. This is perfect. So they wasted a fire and ice, and I'm just gonna wrath, and that's gonna be the end of the game. So they die. I wrath of God, and that's it. All right, cool stuff, cool match. I think the game was locked up here. Obviously, you know my opponent just timed out, but I think the game was locked up from there anyway. I was gonna draw four with AK, so yeah, pretty good. On to the semi-final. All right, folks, on to the semis, playing against the one and only, the man, the legend, Paul Master. We're gonna keep this hand. This looks pretty decent. We have counterspell on two. We can also impulse. Not bad. No idea what Pablo could be playing. Literally everything is within his range, so we're just keeping an obje objectively decent hand. Basic Swamp. Cabal Therapy. Okay. Named Counterspell. Dude, he just never misses. <laughs> it's insane. It's absolutely insane. He never misses. I'm gonna play out the factory there. Maybe this is wrong. But I don't know what I'm up against. I may need this. Oh, so this is the survival deck. Okay, this is a problem. I think I'm going to take the Seal of Cleansing over the White Source because I have way more White Sources than Seal of Cleansings. But I really don't want to do that. And I, re I really needed to find a land there, unfortunately. So I'm going to play the Island here. That part is for sure. Now, the question is whether I Chain of Vapor this. I think I do. Like, it it's really bad, but I feel like I have to do it. And I guess I might as well get in for two. I don't think there's too much value in representing like counter magic or anything like that because like he's just gonna jam anyway okay white source cool we play on <laughs> otherwise the game was gonna end right then and there pitching the hermit okay so this tells me that he probably has recurring nightmare in hand he got mesmeric fiend maybe he's just short on lands actually we're going to get in there he's gonna be able to take my decree but i'm kind of playing blue white aggro here a little bit that wall is kind of rough that's a good draw though. That's a very good draw. Let's play out another factory and I guess I'm just gonna pass the turn. He has to do rest. He just never misses. I guess I should have held on to this because of source of plowshares. I guess I'll take the cantrips. Otherwise I just take two lands and he just do rest the mana leak. So yeah, that's the nightmare. So now we'll have the hermit to deal with, which is pretty brutal. Let's just AK here. Yeah, I'm, I'm good to concede. Let's move on to game number two. So I definitely want another Wrath, and I definitely want the Phyrexian Furnaces. Past that, it gets dicey. Anol seems interesting, because he has both Recurrent Nightmare and the Survival. We can cut one Counterspell. I do still think that I want to have access to the Tides. Medley Mage is an interesting one, but I don't think this is what I want to be doing. The Swords are fine, Impulse, AK, all of these are fine. Could see cutting down on a Chain of Vapor and maybe a Decree. I do have to watch out for Sabo's Web as well, which makes me even more excited about it now. Let's cut a Mana Leak and Counter Spell. Could see cutting a Dust Bowl, like my opponent doesn't have any known basics really. I could cut a Decree, pretty clunky. Gonna be on the play, and this seems fine to me. Gonna lead on basic planes because it allows me to plow over the paradise. Cabal therapy. That's rough. The good thing is, I mean, he names Manalik. Dude, he's a beast. <laughs> he's an absolute beast. He's so good. Okay, play the basic island, pass the turn. And now we have two annuls, which means that he just flashes back the Cabal therapy. And now we, we don't have any answers to survival anymore. This is just devastating. He just had the perfect draw both times. The perfect possible draw every time. 
And now we are left with no answer for survival. I'm gonna play the Fairy Conclave and pass the turn. Like, I'm just forced into an awkward, okay, now I have to try to aggro my opponent out when my deck is very ill-suited to do that. Super brutal. Yeah, I guess I'm just getting in there for two. This is super rough. And now the survival is just gonna bury me. There's honestly an argument to just cycle Decree so that I can get it out of my hand. <laughs> just so that I can uh, just get rid of it. Uh, here, obviously, we're not gonna source to plowshares because this card has all templating. So if I all if I source to plowshares this, then my opponent takes both hard cards. So here, I'm forcing my opponent to choose one of them. Savile Swift. This is unreasonable. <laughs> okay. Like in fact, if I draw survival, I don't honestly. If I draw the seal, I don't even know what I'm supposed to <laughs> to get rid of here. <laughs> sure, he got a bail off. Um. I guess I'll take an island. The Stifle doesn't really do anything for me here. I, I'm not fetching because I don't know what I want to go fetch. Yeah, so now, I mean, if I, if I had fetched before, I would have gone gotten a, would have gotten an island. But clearly what I should get now, it's just the basic planes. So now we have to find the Wrath of God. But it's not looking good for the good guys. Okay, I mean, that means that we, we get to play on a little bit, I guess. I, I'm definitely getting rid of survival here. Like, I can't win without finding a Wrath of God here. He's got Genesis going now. So I think what's gonna happen now is I'm going to, cause he, he's got the range hermit. So I'm just going to cycle for no tokens. Graveborn Muse, that's a doozy. So we have to, I guess we have to top the graph. There's no way around it. So this turn he gets to get back a wall and cast the Muse. Or get, ba get back the hermit, that's much better. Yeah, that's, that just, I don't think I can win anymore. Cause that puts me in a situation like he's gonna play the Muse now which means that I'm forced to effectively use this now. Like I, if, if I draw a Wrath, I just have to cast it. I think I have to use this to Chomp Block. I did find a Wrath. Um, and now we have to... Yeah, but, but Genesis just buries me. Yeah, I, 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 I don't think I can win anymore. I think we're just out. Wow, dude, he had it all. I don't think there's anything I could have done differently. I mean, the Cabal Therapy was absolutely devastating. Um, so... Yeah, I mean, I can make some decree tokens, but we're so far behind. This is even before. Yeah, I mean, we we need a furnace. We need so many things, and we just don't have them. We don't even have the mana. So we just pays for upkeep and to get back the muse. Sense in the squirrels. Factor fiction. I'm just maximizing my life total here. So we can't even wrath, so I have to find plow. All right, uh, man, Paul just continues to... To have me, we have a phrase in in, in Spanish say me, me tenes de hijo, which is you have me as your kid, <laughs> and Pablo really does. So we fell to the mighty pole master, but I did like this deck. I thought that it was a lot smoother than standstills uh, that I have played in the past, mostly because the fact that we actually had something proactive to do adds so much to a deck like this. So I do feel like, at least in the current state of pre-modern, if you wanted to play some sort of control deck, you kind of have to do something like this. I do think that it's also unfortunate, but just like the nature of the deck and the nature of the format, the fact that the format works on so many different axes and there's so many decks that are between good and decent and that people will play, it really forces uh, your deck to stretch a little bit too thin. And I think that the correct approach is what we did. So the way that this version of the deck is built, we are basically gearing towards uh, decks like Blue Eyed Dreadnought, the Red Green Oath deck, the Replenish decks. But we are obviously very, very weak against, and we just saw that in the very last game. Like my opponent resolved the survival and I was just dead out of the water, right? Like there, there was not much that I could do. Obviously, there's a way that we can actually work around that. Like we could do something like add humility, right? Some number of humility would do, would do like a, a lot of work in helping us against uh, survival decks, you know, stuff like elves and whatnot. But, uh, you know, you have to make room for cards in in some way or another like you you cannot play unless you play like a 90 card deck or something you cannot cover all of your bases and it's basically a matter of just choosing what you want to lose to i guess 
and then go in that way. Like, I think that you could, if you really wanted to, like, I don't know, like, you, you, you would need to spend, like, way too much time. And if you are a blue white control aficionado and you love the style deck, which I, I, I do like them, but I'm not enough to, like, go in so deep. Like, this is not the, the main style of deck that I enjoy playing. So if you wanted to, like, really sit down and try to figure out, okay, so... I'm actually going to be playing three meddling mages instead of four because in this matchup I'd rather just have, you know, figure out the whole cyborg mapping and make sure that we have enough cards coming in and not enough cards going out and uh, like building the deck in such a way is is what you would need to do in order to really optimize a list like this. Uh, you know, that would, of course, require a lot of testing. That would require a lot of figuring out the actual uh, metagame and understanding what it is, like, where are the edges that you want to give up? And obviously that's going to be very time-consuming, and I'm honestly not willing to do that. <laughs> so you will have to do that. This is, this is hopefully going to be, like, a solid starting point. This can give you a little bit of a blueprint, and then you can go from here. I think that a deck like this is promising. I did enjoy accumulated knowledge a lot better than Standstill uh, would have been. And, you know, having access to the Mana Leaks, Counterspell, all this stuff. I could even see the other way around and go in four Mana Leaks, three Counterspells. Like, that does not seem super crazy to me, especially when we have a Parallax Tide. Because having five blue mana to protect your Tide plus Chain of Vapor uh, with a Counterspell is, is really asking a lot for, for this deck. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I think that it's interesting, but it just needs some more work. You can start here and see where you can take it. Uh, but that's going to be it for me today, folks. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. If you want to support my content, you can do so through Patreon uh, in the, the link in the description down below. And I'll see you in the next video, folks. Take care and bye-bye. See ya.